Hey friends, I'm Chronically Jenny and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something that is a little bit taboo within the disability world and it really really shouldn't be and that is how do you afford mobility aids? Unfortunately mobility aids are something that is hugely costly which a lot of people don't realise. Both manual and powered wheelchairs can cost the same if not more than a car um, which is really really wild. But I want to share some tips, tricks, hacks um, that you can use to be able to afford these pricey bits of kit. But I also wanted to share with you some ways that you can get mobility aids for free or very, very cheaply and how to make them your own um, if you don't have a lot to spend on them. First up, we're talking about where you can get free and cheap aids. For me, a lot of my early mobility aids were ones that I got very, very cheaply or even free. Most of these were from Facebook Marketplace and this is the place where I've had the most success. Although Facebook does have some strange rules about selling mobility aids online, you can find them if you know what to look for. Unfortunately, the world wheelchair is disliked by Facebook Marketplace. Um, so if you look for things like chair on wheels or things like that, you'll be able to find things. And there's also some really excellent groups which are built for the selling and passing on of different mobility aid equipment so I'll make sure that I link those in the description below. These are really really helpful ways of um, just getting aids that are good quality at a cheap price um, potentially when someone's grown out of them or when someone started using a different mobility aid a lot of people will pass their aids on. So I got my first walker from Facebook Marketplace it cost me £10 um, and that lasted me for years and years. Um, it was really, really brilliant. And then recently, a really, really lovely thing happened where someone put up a manual wheelchair, um, manual sports wheelchair that was £100 and I was more than willing to pay £100 because that's that's relatively, well, very cheap for a, a wheelchair. Um, and when I got there, we got chatting to the guy um, and it was his, his sons who were disabled who have grown out of the wheelchair. Um, and in the end, he just gave it to me um, and it was just such a lovely thing within the disability community. And I think that's something so beautiful about our community is that we know how difficult it is to get these things so if we're able to we do just try and pass these things on. So if you're looking for cheap secondhand or even free aids I definitely recommend looking at Facebook Marketplace and the groups that I mentioned but also looking on general selling sites things like Gumtree I've even seen um, some walking sticks available on Vinted and also I've found some really good deals on places like Amazon where they have um, sticks that are just unboxed which make them a lot cheaper so you can definitely get some really really good deals if you keep your eye out for them. Of course, when you are looking at uh, secondhand mobility aids, you might not necessarily get something that is to your style, to your taste. So something I really, really recommend doing is customising your mobility aids to make them feel like yours. And this can be done really, really cheaply and really, really effectively. For my first walker, I covered the um, like frame of the walker in zebra print tape. Um, I absolutely loved that, just with duct tape. And then I as I was having a bit of a uh, like struggle with accepting the fact that I needed to use a relative walker so young, I covered the seat with stickers of all my favourite things, which really made it easier for me to use because every time I would use it, I would look down and I would see things that made me happy. So I just covered that in some sticky back plastic and it was really, really waterproof. Um, so if you're crafty, I definitely recommend getting crafty. You can use um, vinyl stickers. Um, I've just got a Cricut and I um, may have put all the names on all my walking sticks and on wheelchairs and things as well because I name all my mobility aids. So they've all got their own little name badge sticker now. Um, but you can really, really get creative. I have tried spray painting um, in the past. It doesn't always work but it's definitely an option. Um, I loved, uh, when I was at university, I used to add tinsel and lights and even baubles to my walker one year, just to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more festive. Um, what are some other things that I've done? I love um, putting cushions on. For example, the wheelchair that I got on Facebook Marketplace 
wasn't quite the right fit but all I had to do was get a cushion which didn't cost me very much less than £10 put it on the back and it really really made it work so much better for me um, the same with blankets you can cover over uh, any any bits of the material that is looking a bit shabby with a blanket or fabric if you're a sewer you can make some covers for things um, wheel covers for wheelchairs um, are slightly more expensive but they just bring some personality and make your age your own and make you want to use it and show it off a bit more. So the next option I'm going to talk about with wheelchairs is the option to rent or hire a wheelchair and the organisation that I'm going to talk about is the Red Cross because they are the ones that are recommended by the NHS if you need a short term hire of a wheelchair uh, but they do do long term hires as well. From the Red Cross you can get a self-propelled or transit manual wheelchair from £22 a week. Anyone over the age of five is eligible which is really helpful for children with disabilities and there is also uh, flexible hire periods and support for those who can't afford to pay that fee. So if you're looking to potentially try a wheelchair or you just need it for short-term trip, um, potentially a holiday or um, a visit somewhere, that is a really good option for you. Um, a lot of places that you can go out for the day also have the option to hire wheelchairs or mobility scooters such as zoos or theme parks which can also be a really helpful thing. If you don't always need a wheelchair or mobility scooter but for a long day out like that you'd find it helpful. up we're chatting about wheelchair services and this is something that I don't have any experience in myself but a lot of my friends have been through this process so basically wheelchair services is where you can go to your GP OT physio and they can put a referral in for you to have an assessment for a wheelchair under the NHS um, it's for people with long-term and complex needs basically permanent disability um, they can offer a really wide range of mobility options um, but unfortunately a lot of people who are ambulatory will only get offered a really basic chair but they can also offer you a voucher towards purchasing your own mobility aids which can be helpful However, the difficult thing with wheelchair services is that it takes a really long time, as do most things with the NHS. And this is one of the main reasons why I haven't bothered going down that route at all, because 70% of people wait more than three months to get their wheelchair after they've been assessed. 30% uh, wait more than six months and 15% may wait more than a year, which just isn't um, a workable system especially if you have a disability that changes because if your needs change you need to be reassessed and start the process all over again um, so it's great that this service does exist and it's definitely worth exploring um, but it will take quite a long time compared to the other options that I'm going to talk about in a minute <music> So next up we're going to talk about different funding systems that may be appropriate for you. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is Motability and other payment plan schemes. Motability is just here in the UK, just like wheelchair services, and it is a fantastic scheme where disabled people who receive certain benefits can get either um, a powered wheelchair or mobility scooter or a car um, with adaptations um, using their their benefit money. So for example we chose to have a mobility car and that has a hoist in and different adaptations um, that are suitable for me. But you can also choose for much less of your um, PIP contribution uh, to have a mobility scooter or a powered wheelchair. Um, so basically you have to have your benefits and still have like 12 months left of those left to be able to apply for one. Uh, once you apply for one, you um, get the chair, you get all the insurance breakdown cover just like you would if you're getting a motability car. You can't have both, I don't think, which is difficult. But if you want to check if you're eligible, you can go to the motability website, which I'll link down below. You can um, put in the criteria and see what chairs are available. I also have a really good guide of all the um, 
power chairs and mobility scooters that you can get on the scheme at the moment. All the mobility um, scooters and wheelchairs come at slightly different price points. But one thing to take slightly into consideration is that it does seem to cost a little bit more to do it through Motability than it does to do it if you fund it yourself through a payment plan with the manufacturer or mobility store directly. However, your payments will be over a longer period of time um, than you get if you're just paying out of pocket. For example, if you were looking at something like um, the Will C2, which is my main power wheelchair, I think it's something like £43 a week under the mobility scheme that that would cost you. And that is for a £5,000 chair. Under the Motability Scheme, you will be paying that for three years um, and then you can upgrade. Um, so if you look at the total cost of that over three years, it comes out more in the kind of 6,500 range. So you're paying quite a bit more. Whereas you can go to manufacturers or mobility stores and get payment plans. For example, TJ Mobility have a 12 month payment plan um, and it costs a lot less um, to pay it off that way than it does via Motability. So it depends on your circumstance as to what might be better for you. Obviously in Motability, it comes straight out of your PIP. You don't have to think about it. Whereas obviously you have to pay for it yourself if you do it on a payment plan. Um, but it it could work out cheaper overall to do it via a payment plan. So, and also if you want a car, that's probably a better way to do it is use the Motability to get your car and then pay um, for your um, payment plan out of pocket. Next up, we're going to talk about the charities and grants that can help you pay for any kind of mobility equipment. And there are a huge range of these, which basically means that you don't have to pay very much or any of your own money into getting this equipment that you need. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about, I have a whole two other videos talking about access to work if you really want the full full details but briefly access to work is a scheme here in the UK for disabled people who are in work um, or about to start work but they need um, support to do that work and you can get a huge variety of different things through access to work but one of the things that you can get is specialist equipment and that includes wheelchairs mobility scooters any kind of mobility equipment that you need to be able to do your job um, for example a friend of mine Bay who was in um, one of the videos that I was talking about I'll pop that up the top in case you want to see it um, she got she is an environmental scientist I'm not I can't remember the exact uh, name of her job title sorry Bailey uh, but she got funded I think it was like 16,000 pound wheelchair um, that is made for all terrain so that she can go on sites and go out um, in you know different settings and terrains that she needs to be able to do for her job so you I've heard people getting the Omeo which is again a £20,000 um, wheelchair completely funded through access to work so definitely recommend looking into that if you have um, a job or about to start a job that you need your wheelchair for. Also, lots and lots of charitable grants available for mobility equipment and I'm just going to read a few quick notes from some of them but I know there are probably loads more out there so definitely do search. Um, one that I have had experience with is Mind Body EDS um, and they were able to give me some funding for some, um, some physio support um, a few years ago and that is specifically for people with EDS and HSD but there might be a charity specific to your condition who has grants available to help you with equipment or management um, like physio type sessions um, but some other um, trusts and charities that have funding available we've got the mobility trust that helps people with severe disabilities who can't obtain equipment through other means to get access to larger mobility scooters you need an OT assessment um, and you have to be unable to access it privately but that's a really great option um, there's also Belesma um, B-L-E-S-M-A 
A, which is a charity that supports both current and ex-service people um, who have had life-changing injuries and they deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the Hospital Charity Fund provides a range of grants to individuals from the UK and Ireland for specialist um, mobility equipment such as active wheelchairs and mobility scooters and the Family Fund is one of the UK's largest providers of grants for families um, who have disabled children or young people and they can help you with financial aid when you're looking to purchase a new mobility scooter or aid. As I say that's a really really short list I'll pop details to all of those ones down in the description so that you can find out more but do go and search and see if there are any others available but there are lots and lots of charity options and grant options available to you. <music> I really hope this has helped you get an idea of the schemes, grants um, that are out there so that you can get mobility aid solutions. But you, if you have exhausted all of these options and you have resorted to self-funding or fundraising, then that's what I'm going to talk about next. Um, in terms of self-funding, obviously it's a lot of money. As I was saying before, um, there are good payment plan options for a lot of the kind of mobility stores um, here in the UK where you can split it down into monthly payments without any interest, which can be really, really helpful if that is your only option um, to pay for it out of pocket. But another thing that you can do is do some self fundraising. I did this um, for my first Rolator. Uh, I was really lucky to have the amazing support of you guys who meant that I was able to get that funded for me when I couldn't afford it for getting your aids. Um, something else that is really really good to do is that you don't just have to put the fundraiser out and hope people um, send you some money. You can put on different events um, like asking companies if you can raffle off their products, um, if you can hold things. I know again my friend Bailey when she was getting her first um, all-terrain wheelchair at university she fundraised at university University, got it in the press at university that's actually how we met um, but there were events going on at the university to try and help raise money so do reach out to your local community if you are going to go through the fundraising route your local community or your online community and there's lots and lots of different people who will be up for supporting you with that if you have any other questions about how to afford mobility aids or how to find free and cheap mobility aids um, or want any further advice please do drop your questions and comments in the comment section below and I'll do my best to try and point you in the right direction but I hope this video has made you realize that there are lots of options that can help you afford the aids that you really really need and really really deserve. Um, I'm sending you loads of love. Mobility aid journeys aren't always the easiest and it can come with a lot of trial and error but mobility aids can be so freeing um, and empowering so I really hope you get what you need. If you need some ideas about mobility aids I have a mobility aid tour and a mobility aid Q&A um, which answer all your questions about all the aids that I have had myself over the years and just all your questions in general about getting mobility aids, feeling confident with mobility aids, telling people about mobility aids and more. So please go and watch those videos as well if you haven't already. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd hit subscribe. I'm Chronically Jenny and I'll see you very soon for another video.